Hello and welcome to this quick numeric gun guide. In this video I'm showing you all boss mechanics in the new raid and phase 2 of World of Warcraft Season of Discovery. So let's start. The first boss is Grubbis. He has three phases, but don't worry, the first two are just introductions to the fight. This is an easy start to the raid. In the first phase there will be spawning null mobs, just clear them. In the second phase there is spawning a green cloud which follows one player and also nulls will spawn. You need to move the nulls inside the green cloud to instantly kill them. On the third phase the boss appears with his basilisk at the that needs to be off tank. It resets aggro randomly and petrifies, so be ready to taunt or CC D at. The boss itself busts himself with a buff called Rock Rage. He softly enrages at this point, so it's a bit of a damage race. But the fight doesn't go on for long. After some time, there spawns Gnolls and a green cloud from phase 1 on a player. Simply move the Gnolls inside the cloud, do it fast or they will do AoE damage to your group. Your off tank can do this. Don't let the cloud touch the boss or it will buff him. You can use a nature resistant potion to help. The second boss is Vicious Fallout. You need to move the boss away from the shackles lying on the ground. After some time, the boss spawns adds, which needs to be killed fast. You can also CC them. They try to reach the shackles on the ground. If they touch a shackle, a water elemental will spawn, which needs to be burned down quick and be kicked, or it does a lot of AoE damage to your raid. The boss also casts a sludge on the ground. Your tank needs to move him out of it so your melees don't die. The third boss is the crowd pummeler. This boss uses a numeric and smash in front of him during the fight. It is important that everyone dodges this attack or you will be kicked off the platform. You can do it by standing behind the boss or at the side of it. Watch the defeats of the boss, it shows where he is heading to. He moves his body, so don't get distracted by it. There will also spawn cockwheels at the arena randomly, dodge them. At 20% he starts charging a random player. Move out of his range or dodge the charge. The fourth boss is the Electrocution 6000. You need to make three groups, one melee group and two ranged groups. Your tank needs to tank the boss in front of a wall. Your melee stand behind the boss. Rangers can also position themselves against the wall. Your two ranged groups need to be split up from each other. The boss shoots a lightning attack called Static Arc against the player which is the furthest away from the boss and the players around him. You need to split that damage up and you also get a debuff. If you get two debuffs, you get one shot, so make sure another player in your group takes it next time. It will go away after two intervals. After your group got hit by it, move closer to the boss, so the second range group gets the next hit. Switch this up until the boss is dead. If one range dies, let a melee take its position in the range group. The boss also does a knockback, which pushes your whole raid away. One player gets a debuff at random, which does AoE damage around him. Move out of your group if you get this debuff. The next boss is the Mechanical Menagerie. You have four bosses here, which all need to die at the same time, or they come back up to life with more HP. The sheep needs to be kited by your rangers. It does a buff after some time, which reflects damage. Stop attacking at this point. Your melees can't go close to the sheep, or they will get stunned and die. Let your main tank tank the squirrel and the chicken, and you off tank the dragon. You can tank those three together and cleave them with your melees so everyone can see where the dragon is more easily. Keep moving them around the room because the dragon lays fire on the ground. Don't stand still. After some time the dragon will use a breath attack in one direction. Dodge that attack. It will also use a cast called overheat. Let your off tank pull him away from the other bosses or it will increase their damage by a lot. Bring him back to the others after the buff ends to continue cleaving them. The chicken and the squirrels cast an AoE called Widget Wally, which should be kicked to reduce raid damage. The chicken lays an explosive egg, which needs to be destroyed fast. It also uses a buff called Cluck, which increases its attack speed. Out heal that. The Scryal casts a Witcher Fortress on the ground. Don't stand in it or it does AoE damage and reduces your damage. If you get low on mana, you can activate the red buttons on the statues on the side to give you some mana in exchange for life. Kill all at the same time and the bosses are finished. After this, the final boss will spawn. You probably have to wipe here to adjust your runes and to wreck mana. The final boss has 4 phases, which change at 50% health. The most important part in every phase is to push the red buttons on the statues when they get activated. They will spawn bombs which runs to the boss. Put your rangers in position of the statues to click them when they activate. You will get a debuff for 30 seconds so you have to coordinate here. Another player needs to push the button the next time. Your minis also should help when your rangers are on the other side of the map. A hunter can kill the existing bombs. Don't use your cooldowns at the beginning because a quick sequence will start before the fight. 
In the first phase, the fire phase, the boss does a stacking debuff, which does a lot of damage. You need to tank swap him with your off tank to let your stacks fall off. A paladin can bubble them off. After some time, the boss prepares a flamethrower on its target. Don't stand in front of him and let your tank hide him away. If you get hit, you get more stacks. In the second phase, the ice phase, the boss spawns ice fields on the ground. You need to move out of it or you get a stacking debuff. The bombs will also explode with ice fields on the ground. After some time, the boss casts a coolant discharge. This does damage depending on the amount of frost stacks on your raid. It one shots you at too many stacks. You can remove those stacks with a free action potion or other abilities which stops movement impairing effects like the gnomish ratio, blessing of freedom or vanish. In the third phase, you simply have to kick the cast toxic ventilation. Be careful, the spell doesn't have a cast bar, so be prepared for it, otherwise it one shuts the raid. On the last phase, the boss combines all three phases, so you have to deal with all mechanics at once. You need to reduce itself to zero at this point. After that, the gnome jumps out and you can finish him. Congratulations, like and subscribe for more World of Warcraft Season of Discovery content.